October 22nd, 1983. This would be a sad and tragic day for the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Inmate Thomas Silverstein was being let out of his cell to shower. Another offender, Randy Gometz, would pass Silverstein a shank. The officer, Merle Klutz, would be savagely stabbed and killed by Silverstein because he was being harassed. Silverstein was already a murderer, who some viewed as the most dangerous in the federal prison system. The fateful day wouldn't end there. Officer Robert Hoffman observed inmate Clayton Fountain attacking two officers and went to intervene. Fountain was able to break free and like Silverstein, obtained a shank from another inmate. Fountain stabbed multiple officers, including Hoffman. Hoffman would not survive. This would transform the role of USP Marion, the prison where this incident occurred. Some say this was the start of the Supermax era, but it had its roots in another infamous US prison, which we'll also explore. The federal government currently uses another prison, ADX Florence, as a Supermax for the federal system, but some states also employ their own Supermax prisons. We'll take a look at the origins, current use, and future outlook of the Supermax prison. We'll go international and see what other countries use to control their most dangerous criminals. Let's get into it. We'll start with what is a supermax prison. Encyclopedia Britannica defines it as a collection of separate housing units within a maximum security prison in the American prison system that is designed to house both inmates described as the most hardened criminals and those who cannot be controlled through other means. Wikipedia also adds, the objective is to provide long-term segregated housing for inmates classified as the highest security risks in the prison system and those who pose an extremely serious threat to both national and global security. Crime in the 1920s and 1930s was exploding due to prohibition. This was the gangster era in America. Prisons were being built across the country to house these criminals. The federal government needed a place to house troubled inmates at other facilities. According to the Bureau of Prisons, USP Alcatraz would be the first maximum security facility in the federal system. Although it definitely wouldn't be labeled as a supermax prison in today's terms, it did start the path towards a more restrictive style of corrections in America. August 11, 1934 at 9.40 a.m., 137 of America's most uncontrollable offenders would arrive at Alcatraz Island. The men sent here were considered violent and dangerous, or were high escape risks. This was a highly structured environment where security was more important than rehabilitation. If an inmate showed a willingness to cooperate and follow the rules, they could be transferred to another prison. The average length of stay in Alcatraz was five years. There, of course, would be escape attempts, with the federal government claiming that no one would be successful. If anything, Alcatraz accomplished its mission, which was to hold the most dangerous men in America. Due to maintenance and operating costs, the first maximum security facility would close on March 21st, 1963, after nearly 30 years of operation. Another federal prison would replace the role of Alcatraz, and that would be United States Penitentiary Marion. USP Marion couldn't be any different than Alcatraz. It is located in Southern Illinois, surrounded by woods instead of the San Francisco Bay. Advances in technology allowed fences to replace water. This would be the prison that would birth the idea of the Supermax prison, but it wouldn't be right away. To start, it would operate much like Alcatraz was, with security the top priority. Inmates still had privileges, that would be earned through good behavior. Over the years, a number of dangerous inmates would escape from the prison. The prison was slowly heading towards total lockdown. Then, the events of 1983 would cement its status of America's first supermax prison. With the two officers dead, they would pursue a policy of absolute control of inmates. Offenders would be held in a permanent state of what's known as 23 and one, or locked in their cell for 23 hours with one hour of solitary recreation or shower. Inmates would only leave their cell in restraints with multiple correctional officers there to escort every movement. The Bureau of Prisons believed that this was the only way to keep staff and other inmates safe. The men in this prison had committed murders and assaults at other prisons, and many times had nothing to lose after receiving life sentences. 
During this time, the states would begin to copy the blueprint of the federal system, including two of the largest states in the U.S. California opened their supermax facility, Pelican Bay State Prison, in 1989. New York opened Southport Correctional Facility a year earlier in 1988. In the 1990s, additional states would bring their supermax facilities online. Tam's Correctional Center in Illinois would open in 1995. Red Onion State Prison in Virginia accepted its first Supermax inmates in 1998. Probably the most famous of all Supermax facilities and current Supermax prison for the federal system is ADX Florence. The official title is United States Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility, which was built to replace USP Marion. Marion was never intended to operate as a Supermax prison when it was constructed and presented challenges to staff when it operated in this capacity. ADX Florence officially opened in January 1995, and the dangerous inmates at USP Marion would be transitioned here for housing. USP Marion would officially be downgraded to a medium security prison in 2006. It would be renovated and designated as a communications management unit. ADX Florence is in rural Colorado, Again, quite a change from the previous Supermax facility. It is designed to hold 490 inmates, but has never reached full capacity. The cells are designed for maximum control. They are poured concrete, making it difficult for inmates to fashion any weapons from the bed or other metal components in the cell. ADX Florence holds many international and domestic terrorists, along with prison and street gang leaders. Even in the most secure prisons, murder can happen. In 2005, Sylvester Rivera and Richard Santiago would kill Manuel Torres, who was a high-level member of the Mexican Mafia. This goes to show one lapse in security can lead to deadly consequences. The Supermax Prisons of America deserve a full profiling of each of them, which I plan to investigate in detail in future videos. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you're notified when those profiles are released. If you're interested in a full profile of USP Marion, click the link above to check that out. I previously explored the prison in detail. We'll now look at a couple other countries that employ Supermax facilities to control the dangerous inmates in their prison systems. Goldburn Correctional Center in New South Wales, Australia serves as a Supermax facility for the country. The prison itself opened in 1884, but did not gain its supermax level until the construction of the high-risk management center on the grounds. It is substantially smaller than ADX Florence, with just over 100 beds. Although this makes sense, given the population difference between the countries, according to the Corrective Services of New South Wales, it was designed to accommodate male inmates who have been found to be an extreme high risk to the good order, safety, and security of other correctional centers, serious threat of escape, detained under national security provisions, or are considered high public profile. Our neighbors to the north, Canada, also operate a supermax facility. Located within the regional reception center is the special handling unit. While the main facility opened in 1973, the SHU would open in 1984. It is located just north of Montreal in the province of Quebec. The Canadian government reports that this unit represents the most restrictive level of general institutional custody within the penitentiary system. This unit is also relatively small, much like Australia's. What about countries with lower economic opportunity? We know that El Salvador employs barbaric prison tactics. Many of these countries just don't have the means to build, staff, and maintain the supermax prisons. They often just stick the offenders all together, letting them fend for themselves, instead of attempting to separate violent offenders. What does the future of the supermax prison look like? Many states have begun to close or change the roles of their supermax prisons. Pelican Bay no longer has indefinite segregation, mainly due to lawsuits and a change in public opinion. Tam's Correctional Center in Illinois is closed. The Supreme Court has addressed the use of Supermax prisons. In the case of Wilkinson v. Austin, inmates sued after they felt their 14th Amendment rights were being violated due to their confinement without adequate review. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that prison officials cannot confine inmates in long-term solitary confinement in a supermaximum prison without first giving them the opportunity 
to challenge their placement. This doesn't mean that they still cannot use it. Supermax prisons are designed to hold the most violent offenders in the system. Are they a necessary evil to help protect staff and other inmates? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This was a chasing crime profile of the rise of the Supermax prison. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.